In a small town in North Carolina, USA, a simple conversation in a restaurant triggers a surprising transformation. Let's explore the story of a man from Hickory who, in search of a healthier lifestyle, discovered the Adventist faith and became a leader in a new H. Hmong community, an ethnic group originally from Southeast Asia. Chinu would have never guessed that a conversation about organic tomatoes would lead him and his family to the Adventist faith. He met a Seventh-day Adventist at his job, and they often ate lunch together. His new friend noticed that every time they went out to eat, Chinu threw his tomatoes to the side. So he began talking to him about the value of nutrition and health. I just lost my best friend, was just in a really tough place. Health-wise, I was just in a terrible condition. And that's when I had met one of my very good friends today, and he shared with me the health message. It wasn't long before Chinu was studying about health and the Sabbath. His family began keeping the Sabbath by going on walks and having worship in nature. They did this every week. Hickory, North Carolina was once a textile town that developed a large immigrant community who came to work. One of the largest groups was the Hmong from Southeast Asia. When manufacturing jobs moved overseas, a large number of workers left Hickory. However, the Hmong population stayed. The Hickory Korean Adventist Church's numbers had dwindled. The few members left, noticed their Hmong neighbors, and decided to plant a church. Their goal was to eventually give their space to a future Hmong congregation. As I was in between jobs, I was doing interpreting on the side. I received a phone call one day from a pastor at the Korean SDA Church in Hickory asking for a Hmong interpreter to teach them how to speak Hmong. So Chinu's family attended an Adventist church for the first time. It just felt like a breath of fresh air. Uh, it just felt like just this immense pressure to, uh, just taken off of, it was like my spirit felt so free that first time that we were able to worship. Even just the Korean church members that were there, their character, it actually reflected Christ because they were so friendly and so kind and welcoming that we just felt like we belonged there. Um, and it just felt like it was, it was right. It was where our family needed to be. The family had always been active members of another church. They continued to attend both churches for a while. Eventually, Chinu and Gina were overwhelmed. We had a lot of connection, a lot of friends, and we were leaders of a small group, and we didn't want to just leave them behind. Chinu and Gina earnestly asked God to reveal where they should be. First thing we said was, the, if, if anyone ever asks us to choose between one or the other, um, we know, which decision we know we're where we need to be. The next day, their former pastor asked them to hurry up and come back full time to the church. And we kind of just looked at each other and said, thank you, God, for the answer. Yes. <laughs> the Korean elders believe God is calling them to help plant a Hmong congregation, and they are committed to supporting in any way possible. Church elder Daniel Kim, a recently retired electrical engineer, and his wife, Myung, have moved away to Georgia to care for her parents but they drive six to seven hours round trip every Sabbath to support the Hmong church plant. Well, we feel like we are part of something important. So because of that, sense of mission that we have, the vision that we have, the goal that we have. So because of that, we don't feel like, you know, it's a long drive or hard drive. We were just drawn in by their Christ-like character from the very beginning, their friendliness, their willingness to help, and really their, their, their desire, their selflessness, and their desire to help uh, the Hmong community. And I think for us, that passion is very contagious. And for us, you know, being Hmong, of course, it, there's a, just a big burden, a big responsibility we feel to share the good news with those around us that haven't heard the message. All of Chinu and Gina's kids play a role in the church. From helping teach the children's Sabbath school to running the audiovisual system, everyone is involved. Even Cadence, the youngest, turns the lights off to watch Mission Spotlights and back on afterward. There is still much to do for this Hmong church plant in Hickory. We invite you to pray as the work continues. One thing to pray is really for their, to really come to know who God is, who a loving God and a merciful God, and God that is willing to heal, oh, not only physically, but spiritually. Thank you for supporting Mission and planting churches around the world. This story reminds us how small interactions can lead to significant transformations in a welcoming community, faith can flourish in unexpected places. May we all be inspired to seek new friendships with the purpose of sharing the eternal lifestyle that Jesus offers us.